Hi there. The webinar on mechanical properties and GFRP will start soon. This is the agenda that I have prepared for you. As mentioned, the webinar will be mainly about mechanical properties and quality of GRP. And here we will mainly focus on the protrusion process. We'll start with short introduction of Fiberline, the product overview. Straight, we'll jump into the mechanical properties of the material. A few words on the quality standard and norms. We'll also mention the warranty and how the future of protrusion and composite profiles look like, looks like. Afterwards, we'll end the webinar with a short question round. Let's jump into it. Pipeline is a medium sized company. We have about 100 plus employees. And Fiberline was founded by Henrik Dorit Torning back in 1979. So we have over 40 years of experience in protrusion and composite industry. Fiberline building profiles supplies mainly to the construction industry where we supply building materials, but also fi finished concepts. Our core business includes manufacturing of protruded profiles, processing, assembly of glass fiber profiles. Few words about your presenter today, me. My name is Mirfer. I have been working with Fiberline for past seven years, more or less one third of my life. <laughs> and I am the head of, head of sales and product management. A short product overview over the standard construction profiles that we offer from Fiberline building profiles. When we look at the product overview, we can it, it, they can easily be compared to steel and, and extruded aluminum profiles. For the, on the first, on the left side, we have square tubes in all dimensions from very small square tubes, 30 by 30 millimeter up to 240 by 240 millimeters. Square tubes are the hardest to manufacture due to the hollow section in the middle and, and, and the very tight tolerances. Other than that, we have open profiles like angle, angle profiles, flat profiles, I-beams and U-profiles. Other shapes are possible to manufacture, but the, the, the cross section you're looking at, this is the, those are the standard ones that we have in our program. Other than that, we offer also a wide range of deck profiles which are used as, uh, as decks, bridge decks, and covers as well. Here we are looking at the MD plank, HD plank, and UD plank. Um, all of them are used primarily as bridge decks and covers, but can also be used as, as a cladding systems uh, and for many other purposes. Um, next to the planks, we have wide range of uh, GRP gratings, but those are made in a molded process and are not and will not be part of this webinar as well. Next to the planks, uh, planks um, and gratings and profiles, there is a variety. There's, there's a huge range of uh, attachment methods, brackets, uh, stainless steel parts, screws, and other connections. Material properties of the structural profiles. And here we are mainly focusing on the construction profiles and the production method of protrusion. The buildup of profile. On the left, we are looking at the square tube, um, and this square tube has uh, longitudinal uh, rovings, fibers, giving the, giving the uh, profile strength in the longitudinal direction. Because also construction profiles are um, sometimes loaded in a transverse direction, we have um, transverse fibers as well but those fibers uh, will come in the form of uh, mats and fabrics. If we started looking at the um, longitudinal reinforcement, the longitudinal fibers, we, have, uh, we can choose from three different types. Uh, the UD fibers, which are unidirectional and give the profile optimum strength in the longitudinal direction. We have the uh, spot fibers, which are more, which are actually based on UD fibers, but um, but have a slightly um, spun uh, rovings, uh, giving the profiles more volume, and also transverse strength and mock as well. 
uh, spun and mock fibers are more functional fibers. We use them uh, in, in different parts of the tool to increase the volume, um, but also to, 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 to clean the tooling for uh, residues. The transverse fibers, as mentioned, will give you um, better mechanical properties in the transverse direction, and they come in, in, in form of mats and fabrics. Uh, we have uh, we use four standard fabrics uh, and mats. Uh, continuous mats with random fiber orientation. This is the most uh, well-known uh, mat out there and is used also for many other processes like hand lamination. Uh, the next one is, is wave fibers with uh, zero and 90 degrees fibers. This is the one most commonly used in the protrusion industry. Uh, complex mat is actually a combination of, of a continuous mat uh, sewn to the wave fibers. This mat actually gives you a very good um, suction of the resin and it also can also improve your mechanical properties as well. The next one is a bi-directory co complex mat. This next to the zero and 90 degrees has a uh, bi-actional fibers as well of plus minus 45 degrees. Those, fa those fabrics are used in special profiles and, and, and customer specific profiles as well and are not part of our standard profile range. On the right upper, part, upper image, you see actually an I200 beam um, uh, and you see how the fibers look like um, when we are starting manufacturing the, pro the process. Uh, fibers are the dry part of the raw material package of, of each construction profile. Um, next to the fibers, uh, we have also uh, a resin. If we look at the mechanical properties of the raw materials, we can see that the um, densities for, for fibers, uh, fiber, uh, for, for, for e-glass, uh, the fibers reinforcement used uh, in, in, in our process is 2.6 grams per cubic centimeter, and the resin is, is, is significantly lighter. When we combine this, um, the, the, the resin and, and the in e glass, you get a you get a density of about 1.8, 1.9 uh, uh, grams per cubic centimeter for the for the profile. The tensile strength of, of e glass is extremely high, also compared to to other traditional materials. But as you see here on this uh, on this um, image here, the the, the e modulus is very low for the for the for the fibers, but also very low for the resin. This will also uh, reflect the e modulus for the overall profile. Uh, standard profile con uh, consists of 65% uh, fibers, about 50% uh, are longitudinal fibers, and about um, 10 to 15% are fibers in the transverse direction. The resin is about 33% of the overall weight of the profile, and additives like uh, fire retardants, lubricants, and other additives used for, for, for optimizing the production are about 2%. And, if we are, and, and here we are primarily talking about weight percent, not volume percent. So when you combine the, the raw materials, the dry part and wet part, you get mechanical properties that look like this. Here should be noted that all composite profiles are autotropic profiles. This means that you will get different strength parameters depending on what direction you're looking at. If we look at the tensile strength in the axial direction, in the dire axial direction is the direction of protrusion of manufacturing, we can see that the, the characteristic value is 280 megapascal or newton per square millimeter. But the transverse strength in the, in the, in the, in the direction 90% to the protrude, 90 degrees to the protrusion is only 50. And this is primarily due to the different um, uh, laminates that, that, that are used. This also uh, is, 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 um, is this also can be seen in the compressive strength and also the pin barrack strength. If we look at the e modulus, e modulus, e modulus the full section e modulus, tensile modulus, and compression modulus are, are heavily dependent on the wall thickness. The thicker the wall of the of, of your profile, the, the the higher the value is. For the for the smallest cross sections from five to eight. We have a, uh, the average volume, uh, the average E modulus is 28 gigapascal, and it goes up to 31. And here should be noted that those are average values, and the and the strength properties are characteristic values. All those pro all those values that are mentioned here are determined by uh, an ISO standard or or ASTM standard.
Other mechanical properties that we have measured for, for our construction profiles are the coefficient of thermal expansion. And the coefficient of thermal expansion in the axial direction is actually uh, very similar to the steel. So the materials actually go good hand in hand. The, thermal, uh, the coefficient of thermal expansion in the transverse direction is slightly higher because here you have less reinforcement, meaning you have more resin and resin is the, is, is the part that actually uh, gives after and, and expands uh, when you increase the temperature or decrease the temperature. The creep tendency is also um, higher than, uh, than, than, than for, for other materials and is, and, and is at, the, at the constant load uh, less than 6%. If we look at the mechanical properties uh, compared to the other materials, we can look at a Hooke's law where you at the x-axis will, uh, will have the elongation in percentage and the y-axis is the megapascal uh, unit. Uh, if we plot the graphs uh, here, and sorry for the for the German translation of the of the curves, but we, you have the, the 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 black line is the fiber line uh, fiber line material or, or composite material of with glass fibers as reinforcement and polyester as resin. Uh, you see that it 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 has a much higher uh, breaking force than than steel, aluminium, wood, and PVC. But you see also that it it it, it tends to have um, higher deformation uh, at the breaking point. This is also uh, visible at the, at the E-modulus, which is about one seventh of steel. Here should also be noted when the profile is, when the profile, when the load is removed, that the profile will have the tendency to, to, to go to back to the original shape. But also at breaking point, which was something very different to so steel, you see, uh, you, you will hear fibers breaking apart and you definitely know that you have achieved uh, the, the breaking force and, and there is, when the first fiber starts to break down, there is no way to get to, to, to return to, to the original shape or, or the original mechanical properties. If we now compare or compare ourselves to the to aluminum and, and steel, which are the main uh, competitors in this market and, 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 and the main manuf manufacturer and, and material technologies, we see that the strength parameters are, are high at, at, at all, all three of the, of the materials. Uh, the weight is very low, as mentioned, the, the density is 1.8 and it's actually lower than aluminum, which is about 2.7 and, and, and much lower than, than for steel. Chemical resistance is also outstanding since it's a composite material where the, uh, where the, where the, where the, where the resin part is actually protecting the fibers from, uh, from chemical re resistance. Corrosion resistance is also very high. Uh, the material cannot uh, rust um, uh, compared to steel and aluminium. Uh, electrical conduct conductivity is also very low. Um, thermal conductivity is also low, and this is also one of the reasons why many of those materials end up as uh, window frames and insulator plates. Environmental impact is also low since we use a lot, a lot less energy to make the profiles compared with steel and aluminium as well. Now let's look at, um, at, at, at the case study here. Um, we have a, on the, the right side, we have a four meter beam, uh, which is loaded with 10 kN per meter. The deflect, deflection limit should be um, L over 300. So uh, around 13.3 millimeter. A steel beam that can withstand this load and, and, uh, be, and have a deflection over the, the limit is IPE 220. So if we multiply the, the stiffness of the steel with the moment of inertia, with the geometrical properties of the IP, IPE 220, um, we see that, um, that the stiffness, that the stiffness uh, should be su sufficient, but also that the deflection is 5.73 millimeters. Uh, the IPE 220 in four meter weighs around 104 kilos. And if we take, take the equation and, and, and um, divide it by the E modulus of 31,000 megapascal for, uh, for FRP or GRP, we can see that we need at least a moment of inertia of, of 187, uh, 187 for, for, the, for the GRP profiles. And then if, if we bring up the table for, um, for I profiles that are standard in, uh, in fiber and product range, we can see actually that the two profiles uh, may fit uh, this application. 
the I300 by 150 and the I360 by 180. Now, uh, a lot of numbers here uh, and equations, but uh, yeah, you can, you can uh, you, we'll send you the, the, the slides and the presentation later on, so you can do the, the check yourself. But what we, we can actually see that that actually both profiles will fulfill the, the, the requirements of, of, of bending of um, L over 300, where the, um, if we use uh, if we use the I300, we can see that the bending uh, of, the, of the beam will be 9.3 millimeters well within the limit of uh, of the requirements. Uh, this means also that, uh, that the, the bending is uh, is uh, deformation is slightly more, but we see but you can see that the, that the weight of the I300 is just 62 kilos uh, for the whole four meter of beam. Uh, you get 30 36 percent more height compared to steel, and this is primarily due to the lower E modulus. The only way you, you, you can compensate for the lower E modulus is to have a higher cross section, and this is what we have here. But on the other hand, you actually save 40% of weight, even by 36% higher, higher cross section, and the savings are primarily due to the lower density. Next to the next to the lower lower E modulus or stiffness, um, the thing. Uh, every engineer should be aware of when designing with FRP is the pin bearing strength. This is also completely different to what people are used to uh, coming from steel and other traditional building materials. Here we have gathered some images on, on how, uh, the, how the connections usually are designed with. And what is also very important is that the pin bearing strength is different due to the, uh, due to the material properties in longitudinal and transverse direction. What you should also be aware of is, is the distance um, uh, to, to the open edges. Uh, for this, we have developed uh, and tested several different uh, theories and, and, they had, and we have developed tables describing what the distance should be to the open edges, but also the distance between bolts and holes. So um, again, a German table uh, here, uh, but we can easily help you out if you have a concrete project where you have to design, um, design a truss structure or design uh, mechanical connections. But we see that the, the distance uh, should at least be two times at the whole diameter. And the, the, but this, this distance also depends on the, the load direction, but also where, where uh, of the direction of, of protrusion. So are we talking about transverse or longitudinal direction? Um, we have also uh, in our design manual and our certification, we have a variety of uh, approved connection methods and connection designs which are proven to work and which we have also used in the past many times. And this is one of them. And this connection was used for, for this uh, truss bridge, uh, which, was, uh, which had a span of uh, 15 meters and was one meter wide. And when the pit bearing strength is not, not high, high enough, what you can always do, you can increase the, lo the, the local pin bearing strength by adding uh, steel or aluminum plates around the around the bolts and holes. And this is what you can see on the on this image left and right. Few words about the quality insurance and documentation. Um, Fiberline is obviously like many company, many manufacturing manufacturing companies today uh, certified according to ISO 9001. And furthermore, uh, we have full design manual in, in, in German, English and Danish language available on our website. Next to this, uh, Fiberline, uh, Fiberline construction profiles are CE marked, and we have internal uh, factory production control. More on this later. Other than that, all our materials and new developments are tested at uh, at various institutes. Uh, for instance, Ema Dresden and F H Aachen, uh, which is a engineering uh, school in in south of, uh, in east of Germany. A bit more on approvals and standards. And for the German market, we have several different approvals um, called ABG, Allgemeine Bauartgenehmigung, which uh, uh, approve us to sell and, 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 and use our materials for the German market. It, this also give, those approvals also are guidelines for the design, design engineers, which give them um, mechanical properties and equations on how to design with FRP. For the European market, we have the CE marking. According to European technical assessment, um, since the protrusion profiles are not uh, harmonized, or there are there are no harmonized standards for the protrusion profiles, 
you have to um, apply for CE marking through another another ways and channels. This has been a five year um, a journey for us to receive the CE marking for profiles and um, it has been worth while waiting for. Other than that, for, for different markets and different uh, areas uh, and different countries, we have uh, different approvals, which all can be found on the homepage. Um, a few words about um, the, the only existing production standard for, for pultrusion, and this is the EN13701 part one to three. And I will I have a, a separate slide for that. Um, other than that, it, can, it could be it can be said that um, Eurocode for composite materials is uh, more or less um, around the corner. We expect the zero code to be launched over the next one, one and a half years, which be a huge game changer for the whole industry. And a few words about the euro code. Euro codes uh, from the one to ten um, are uh, available today, and euro codes are um, are describing how to uh, handle and work with materials, uh, uh, construction materials like like steel, wood, aluminium, glass, reinforced concrete, and so on. Uh, so we expect a euro code to be uh, out on the street. Uh, over the next um, a period of one, one and a half years. There is a, a pre euro code available uh, at the EUCS homepage. Uh, the link is here where you can have a look at how the how the in, uh, how the euro code may look like in uh, in few years uh, when it hits the, hits the streets. Yeah, a bit more about the EN 1376 uh, standard for protruded profiles um, developed and written back in the uh, end of 90s. Um, the, the 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 norm here has uh, has uh, three chapters, where the main focus is on chapter two and three. Um, uh, for the chapter two, uh, you will find a specification of of how to test profiles, how to defect, uh, how to see and uh, and and uh, um, visit, uh, def detect the def defections in the profile, and 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 then you will also see a chapter on tolerances and the quality of protrusion profiles. On the right, you will see. Um, I, I took a screenshot of the of the EN thirty seven F six part two annex B, which shows which shows allowable tolerances for the protrusion profiles. You can see you can see that the tolerances are are um, uh, yes, the, the tolerances are depending uh, on the on the wall thickness and also if you have open and closed profiles. And then there are tolerances for flatness or for 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 width and and, and um, length of the profile as well. Uh, and chapter three is uh, it is um, is the classification of of, of protruded profiles in two classes E seventeen and E thirty E twenty three. And Fabon, uh, we are manufacturing uh, profiles according to E thirty seven seven oh six, but we have much higher mechanical properties that mentioned um, in in the E seventeen and E twenty three as well, and all. And what can also be said that the mechanical properties in uh, according to EN 3707-06-3 are minimum values that need to be achieved. All our mechanical properties are characteristic and, and evaluated according to EN 1901. A bit more about the marking and traceability of the profiles. Uh, due to the CE marking, um, all our profiles have to be have to have a full traceability uh, from the raw materials uh, to the manufacturing and to the to the end product and 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 the, and the application. So what we do for this uh, uh, is actually we print uh, profile we, on each profiles uh, each two meter uh, we we print um, a stamp. Normally, um, I took an example here. Uh, it's, uh, it's a stamp made by Fiberline, and then you have the profile uh, profile dimension. The next uh, uh, dark blue part is the, is the resin system used. The gray part is the CE um, CE marking and the uh, and the notifying body uh, trace number, and the ETA where you can find the mechanical properties for the profile I have purchased. Next to that, we mark the item number, the bulk number, the the date stamp, and the time stamp. Um, and this is this is your way to find uh, to find out that this profile is has been CE marked. With the time and date stamp, we can trace back to the to the uh, to the profile uh, and 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 the uh, and the process parameters that this profile was manufactured according after to uh, according to. And by the bulk, we can trace back the raw materials that went into the into the profile. 
The CE market requires also us to undergo external external monitoring, and this is done two times a year for the CE marking. So two times a year, a notifying body or test institute, they will come in house and they will check the production. They will check what we have produced over the last half a year, and they will take samples home and do the testing on those two profiles themselves. Um, I mentioned also factory production control or FPC, and, and for the factory production control, we have to check all the incoming goods material. So we have to check the viscosity of the resins, the, 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 um, uh, the humidity of, of the fibers and, and how all this is packaged. And then next to the incoming goods inspection, we have also to check, we have to check the, the quality control of the finished profiles, profiles coming out of the protrusion machines. And for this, we have to check geometry, weight creep modules of elasticity um we have to take the glass content and dsc value and all those checks are performed uh, for each four hours and and for each startup of, of new profile and when you have done all this and and fulfill all the criteria and documentation you can actually print ce mark on your profiles as mentioned for us this was a uh, a five-year uh, period uh, it is very time consuming <laughs> and tiring a few slides on uh, long-term durability. Uh, back in 2004, we built uh, German's first uh, road bridge. Uh, this was a small bridge of about eight meters uh, length and four meters uh, of, of width. And this bridge was made of, of profiles, a profile called asset profile. You can see the cross-sectional dimension and, uh, on, on the screen now. Uh, this, this bridge was actually glued together and um, was pre-assembled in, 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 in a factory or warehouse. Uh, Close to the close to the end uh, destination. At the end end side and destination, the the two parts were just glued together, as you can see on the on the lower right image. Um, so what the the what we did for this project, we 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 hit some uh, some test materials into the bridge, and uh, and we together with Ima Dresden, then also our notifying body, we developed uh, developed a, a plan on on how and what we should test over the next few years. Um, so you can see on the on, on the diagram that that it all started in the two, in 2006, where we took out the first samples and do the double lab shear test, the, the test of the of, of the bonding connection. We also measured the bonding bending strength of the profiles, and for each uh, and in 2011 the creep uh, tendency was tested, and the creep tendency was tested by placing a 20 ton truck on the bridge and measuring the deflection. Uh, before and then after the, the truck has been parked there for several hours, actually more or less 24 hours. If we look at the, yes, this is uh, on the lower part, you see the samples which were just placed inside the bridge, inside one of the hollow section of the profile. If we look at the, at the properties, you can see that from 2006 to 2019, when the last samples were, were removed, that they are pretty steady. And this is the test. This is a double lab shear test. Uh, as mentioned, this test is primarily designed to test the, 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 the connection between the adhesive and then the and the and the profiles. So pretty pretty steady uh, result with very little of variation. Next to that, also we tested also the the, the, the bending test according to ISO fourteen one two five. And those bedding tests looks also look also pretty pretty steady uh, over the over the period uh, from 2006 to, to, to 2019 as well. Uh, a few words about the warranty. Uh, since we all we have many projects like uh, like this bridge where we monitor the mechanical properties, we can uh, we can give a we can give a guarantee or warranty uh, of of 20 years on the mechanical properties of our construction profiles. As mentioned, the basis for this is, is, is many, many years uh, with experience and testing on the profiles and all the backgrounds, uh, background information uh, and, and, and what the warranty covered, uh, covers can be found on our homepage. Uh, future of protruded on our, our fiberglass profiles or the, the it, yeah, future can be split in two two different parts. Um, uh, you can say the future just around the corner is to increase the stiffness of the profiles, and this can easily be made by by switching to to higher modules uh, glass. 
um, I mentioned a modulus of glass of about 75 gigapascal in one of my first slides, but today you can you can you can uh, purchase off shelf um, uh, bobbins uh, with, with fiberglass with a uh, e modulus of over 95 gigapascal. This change can be, be easily uh, easily made um, since uh, sizing types are are similar. But next to this, we should not neglect the other fiber materials. Uh, today, our construction profiles are mainly made of are only made of glass fiber, but uh, but we are seeing more and more products being pushed out in the market. Uh, where natural fibers uh, are, are part of the reinforcement material. On the right, I took uh, a picture of, um, of a bobbin made from natural fibers, and this was a jute fiber here, and those fibers can easily be used in the protrusion process as well. There are some uh, disadvantages by using natural fibers, primarily the, the, the water absorption, but also um, significantly uh, lower mechanical properties. On the other hand, natural fibers are or will be in the long run much cheaper than, uh, than glass fibers since they require a lot, lot less energy to be manufactured. And again, they are natural fibers and they could be manufactured uh, all, to, all around uh, the world. If we look at the resin, uh, resin part, obviously um, a lot of technology and research have, have been made on, on the resin parts as well. For, for the future, we're going to look at uh, purpose optimized resins with the higher fire resistance, electrical conductivity, but also a resins with different color applications. And we should also not neglect bio-based resins, which are which we which we which we are starting to see more and more of. Next to the next to the raw materials, we can also see huge improvements in the in the cross-sectional properties. So making slimmer profiles, making optimized profiles, and making profiles that are optimized for the individual uh, individual applications. We have a few years ago we have tested this uh, this theory where we have actually um, uh, simultaneously to our standard product range we have made a product range that we call called light profiles. Those are profiles with asymmetric geometries, meaning that the that the flanges of the profiles were thinner than the web. And giving uh, giving uh, more or less the same uh, overall mechanical properties, but with significantly significantly less materials. So this was my uh, presentation. Uh, I hope uh, you learned something new, and I will I will be willing to take some of your questions. Thanks for that, Miafit. Yeah, we have a few questions, and there's somebody here who's he's asking, do you have information about bonded joints, information such as the type of adhesive, the strength, and how best to apply it? Yeah, uh, uh, since you, you cannot weld um, uh, glass fiber reinforced profiles from us, the only, the only method of combining two profiles together is, is bolting or, or bonding. I had a, I mentioned uh, bolting connections, which are uh, the, the 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 easiest uh, connection uh, types uh, since they are very similar to to other manufacture uh, to other materials. But bonding connections are also very easy. For this, we uh, we have made a, a very um, informative and uh, guidelines. Uh, For this, we have made uh, informative guidelines and, and, and videos on how to uh, do bonded connections. Uh, for, the, for the adhesive, we uh, we primarily would like you to use uh, two uh, K epoxy, res epoxy adhesives uh, with, with a proven track record. And Matt is asking what type of adhesive are used? I don't know if you uh, want to elaborate on that. For example, in your long term bridge data. In the long term uh, bridge test, uh, we have used a Cicadua 330 adhesive, which is um, uh, adhesive with very low viscosity and, and very wide temperature range. Uh, it should be said that this bridge was actually uh, installed in the, in the winter times. So you need to look for adhesive, adhesive that can uh, suit your uh, uh, application, uh, especially also the, 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 the temperature range. And a guy called Stoyan is asking, how about the recycling of GFRP? Yes, uh, very good question. Um, the, the only viable way of recycling GRP today, uh, economically speaking, is actually the, we call it cement clink route. 
So what we do actually with our scrap in the production, we send it to a company which shredders the, the, the big profiles to uh, small uh, parts, small particle, uh, particle size parts. And those particles, small uh, parts are then being uh, used in the production of cement. And um, the, the, those particles are um, or consist of, of fiberglass and, and resin. The resin is used as a fuel for the cement production and the glass, uh, which is silicate, uh, is used as, a, as an additive for the, for the cement production. And Jan is asking, can I find construction advice on constructing pipes combined with your profiles? I did not catch that question. It was a bit laggy. Can I find construction advice on constructing pipes combined with your profiles? Um, construction pipes, um, yes, uh, we have uh, we have done that in the past, and we can uh, gladly advise you if you just let us. I don't know if it's my connection or your connection, Mirvid, but um, I didn't hear the end of your um, your reply. Hopefully, they did out there. Yeah. And uh, let me just see if anything else has come in. Uh, one last question. Which quality requirements and standards do your gratings meet? Uh, as mentioned in, in the beginning, the gratings are not manufactured by the process of protrusion. They are manufactured by a molding process, so they don't meet the same standards as the construction profiles. We have several different uh, standards uh, for the gratings, uh, but the gratings are not CE marked and are also not part of the factory production control. Uh, some of the standards uh, which gratings fulfill are the German um, German standards for the railway industry and also the DNB standards uh, for the offshore industry as well. That's it. No more questions from here. Perfect. If you have any any questions, please let me know uh, on, on on LinkedIn or uh, or by the mail. We will gladly answer them. Thanks for listening. <laughs>